Hello, this is Bill Warner with another podcast on anything and everything related to political Islam. In Egypt, there is a proposed domestic violence bill that would target abusive men who beat their wives or female family members. According to the National Council for Women, the state body concerned with protecting women's rights, 86% of wives in Egypt suffer spousal abuse. The statistic may be even higher considering that it is culturally unacceptable for battered wives to report incidences of domestic violence to the police. I was speaking with a soldier who had served in the Afghan war and what they were doing was at the Khyber Pass they were taking photographs of everyone who came through. Since about half these would be women, they had female officers there in a tent. The female officers said that 90% of the women when they took down their veils to have their picture taken, were bruised. In Pakistan, a survey taken about 10 years ago said that 90% of the women there had been beaten by their husbands. Quran 4:34, Men have authority over women because God has made the one superior to the other and because they spend their wealth to maintain them. Good women are obedient. They guard their unseen parts because Allah has guarded them. As for those whom you fear, disobedience, admonish them and forsake them in beds apart and beat them. Then if they obey you, take no further action against them. Surely Allah is high and supreme. In Iran, a husband was seen grinning ear to ear while carrying a knife in the decapitated head of his teenage wife. Sajid Hadari was seen banishing a knife in one hand and the head of his wife in the other in the streets of Avez, having allegedly beheaded the wife in a so-called honor killing. The 17-year-old wife was murdered after her father and brother dragged her back from Turkey where she had fled. Now, under Sharia law, a father is not to be punished for killing his child. The following are not subject to retaliation. A Muslim for killing a Kafir, or a father or mother, or their fathers and mothers, for killing their offspring or their offspring's offspring. An Afghan Muslim refugee was accused of sexually assaulting a three-year-old girl claims his behavior is permitted by Islamic culture. Well, in general, he's correct, but the Sharia actually says that she should be at least six years old. In Pakistan, they have forbade Valentine's Day. Boys and girls must not come nearer than six meters of distance to each other. In Iran, Valentine's Day has become a big holiday for the young. And why is it so popular? Because they despise the mullahs. And if the mullahs don't want them to do it, then that makes them want to do it. So in Iran, Valentine's Day is a vote against the mullahs. In Pakistan, a mentally unstable man was stoned to death for blasphemy, allegedly for desecrating a Quran. Well, this is interesting because the charge of insanity is used to excuse jihad. That is, say, someone in Paris, a Muslim, stabs three people. What is said is, is, well, he was insane. So here the excuse is being used the other way. In India, Muslims say women get raped by Muslim men if they don't wear the hijab. Protests in Karnaka began after six female students who were Muslim of the government girls' PU college alleged that they had been prevented from attending classes for wearing the Islamic hijab to cover their hair. In Quran 3359, Messenger, command your wives and daughters and the wives of the believers to not let their veils fall down. Therefore, they will be recognized and not assaulted. Allah is forgiving and merciful. Thank you. Thanks for listening. If you would like to learn more, please go to politicalislam.com or cspii.org.